So it is new project time then here at Custom Body Repair. Now this is a Mark IV Golf 1.8 20 valve turbo. So just to run you through, I've had loads of Golfs over the years and the one that I miss more than anything, if I'm honest, was my Mark IV 1.8 turbo. It's just such a fun car and I love, I think it's the best looking Golf out of all the models they did. But this one is a cheap buy I picked up from Facebook Marketplace for the grand total of £475. It cost £166 to be delivered, so there's our total. So that's what I'm into it so far. Now, as you can see, it is every bit £475 worth of car, if not less. We've got all kinds of plantation and moss growing out of it, and it is just hanging. It hasn't been washed in years. Um, it's really been unloved, this car, but what I like about it more than anything is, unlike most of the Mark IVs, there's really no sign of rust. There's a tiny little dot there on the rear arch, which is nothing. Rear bumper's seen better days. That's a bit shabby, but of course, that's going to be taken off, refurbed, painted, if I don't put like an R-Line one or something like that on. Um, so literally, I haven't even lifted the bonnet on this car since it got dropped off. Let's just have a look inside the boot, which is tough to get up okay that's how c shut it was typical then on these golfs the uh the rear handle always goes scabby and rusty so that'll need to be sorted i mean these are minor issues in the grand scheme of things so uh, we've got a free guns and easy bleed that can't be bad we've got some brake fluid well no we've got some brake fluid by the looks of it loads of it so the previous owner reported to me that there's an issue with the brakes in this car. Now, I don't know what that is. That could be the ABS unit, it could be the servo, it could be the main pump, it could be master cylinder, it could be all sorts of different things. So, it's gonna take some fault finding to find out what that is. Um, even got a free rubber mallet. I mean, I'm loving the fact that we literally got a free toolbox with this wheel brace, happy days. So, that's sort of the, the, the rear of the car. Then now, what you can see is it's hanging inside as well. Now, there has been a dog in here, and I would say it's been living in here rather than just riding in the car because it is absolutely covered in dog hair and crud. Right, let's carry on round and have a look at the inside. So, inside the main interior of the car then, we've got more evidence that we've had a dog or a pack of dogs living inside, as can we I can see. Can I just point out when you shut the boot, a part fell off. <laughs> oh no. What was it? Oh. Um, right, not sure where that's from, so that can go in there. <laughs> anyway, that's going to be a lens of some sort. Right, obviously, I'm going to need to replace steering wheel. These are just minor things, but I'm probably going to put a Mark 7 GT, GTI steering wheel in there or something like that. Um, my plan then with this car, I will level with you. Obviously, it's going to have to have a humongous valet, like the, the kind that's never been seen before, because then I can see what I'm working with from the ground up. But I always wanted a brand new Mark IV Golf Turbo, but you know, by the time I'd bought one, they'd been out a few years, the Mark V was already out, so you couldn't get a brand new one. Now, it came to my, my attention that the only way I'm gonna get one of them is to build one. So that is exactly what this is gonna be. I'm gonna take this car down to essentially component form to a completely bare shell, refurb everything that needs refurbing, repair everything that needs repairing, rebuild the engine, any new parts that I'm gonna to have to replace, I'll just replace them. But we're gonna do a thorough clean, we're gonna have carpets out, headliner out, seats out. I may reupholster or change the seats, but they're in really nice condition actually for the age of it. So I think a good clean up on those is gonna do the trick. Because I do want to keep it fairly standard, but at the same time, um, you know, customise it to a level where I'm happy with, but also have it like a brand new car. So, that's the inside. Dan, if you just want to pan round that to show how bad it is. So there's another fault then. The handle is missing off the driver's seat to be able to tip it forward, so that's going to have to be sorted as well. But there's all sorts of rubbish and junk in here. Someone's replaced the MAF sensor at some point. I think they've actually removed it. Um, but so the braking is only one of the issues with this car as well i was told by the owner it has a gearbox fault as well that it does find gear but it takes a while to get there so again that could be an internal gearbox fault it could be an issue with the clutch hydraulics because we know the brakes are playing up and they're on the same system so that could all be linked so that's something else we're going to have to find as well now i haven't even lifted the bonnet on this car yet so let's do that good no more parts fell off missing a lens of course overall though body work wise it's actually not that bad um there's a lot obviously it's gonna have to have a real good clean like i say 
Okay, okay, this is the money shot then. I haven't even lifted this yet, but you can see at some point, someone's put some money into this. It's got a K&N Typhoon intake system uh, with a forged recirculator valve as well, by the looks of it. It doesn't look like a blow-off valve. It looks like a full recirc. It's got silicon hoses. By the looks of it, Audi R8 coil packs as well. Um, it's just, look, you know, it's unloved. There's dust and debris and crud everywhere. So it's been unloved but that's what we're gonna change. And yeah, there's no battery on it. So I don't even know if this car runs. So that's gonna be a test. Obviously, these engines were known for oil sludging issues. So that's the first thing I'm gonna address when we get the engine out is that sump's coming off, the oil pump and pickup and all that kind of stuff is gonna be changed along with the timing belt and timing chain. Make sure that all of those engine internals are exactly where I want them to be. We'll paint up any bits of the engine we're gonna paint up, but as part of that, we'll be replacing all the engine gaskets, head gasket, rocker cover gasket, probably the crank seal, everything, so that this engine is almost brand new. Um, but overall, this looks like about one of the best bits so far. So this is good news. I'm really happy with that cold air intake system. That's fantastic. Someone spent some dosh on that. So around the passenger side then, I'm gonna come around here and have a look, Dan. So I've got a bit of a dent in the wing. Obviously that's no problem, but wings are so cheap for these, I'll probably just put a wing on. And then we're gonna to have to take the front end apart, sort out all the alignment because the whole car is getting a paint job anyway. Although this is where I'm probably gonna be able to use some of your guys' help is, my original plan was to paint this car like a gunmetal matte grey, do the wheels nice, because I do want to keep these Audi rotors, they're really nice. Um, always sort of fancied a Mark IV with those on, and this one came with them. But I now I've got about 50 different colours in mind. So if any of you guys know of a good colour scheme, or you have a good colour scheme in mind that I might be able to do on this with wheels versus body, let me know in the comments because I really want to get some great ideas on board and be able to take those through and maybe even showcase them in the build somewhere. Um, so yeah, passenger side then, it's very much the same story. We've got moss and vegetation growing out of everywhere and all sorts of crud and what looked like undiscovered species here growing on the scraper molding. So it's in pretty rough shape. We've got some mad lacquer and paint peel up there. Looks like it's had a paint job at some point and it's not been very well keyed up. Okay, that's no problem. All that's going to get done and sorted. It'll be like windows out, everything. So yeah, naturally, like most used cars, it's had some paint. We've got a little bit of rust starting up here on the rail as well. So, but again, the arches, really, really clean. One little dot on each arch, so I'm pleased with that, but I'll take care of all of that as part of the restoration. But more importantly, I've never heard this run. I don't know if it does run. I think we need to get a battery on it and see if it'll start. But let's grab a battery and see if we can fire it up. So here's a battery I charged up earlier for this very reason. I don't even know if it'll fit in the battery tray, but the battery tray's busted up anyway. So let's ram it in there for now and we'll put a new one on it at some point. Right, let's just see if we can get any kind of power going through this. And just see if it might fire up. Okay, well it's a good sign. We've got a couple of little sparks, so we know there's some charge in the battery. Right, does the locking work? Well, that would be Oh yeah, it does. Brilliant, it unlocked the passenger door. Right, wish me luck, let's see if it runs. Oh. Right, moment of truth then, let's see if it goes. Right, we've got ignition. And we've got nothing. I don't think there's enough power in the battery, we need to get a jump back. Take two then, let's see if this does it. Go on. Oh, okay, close. It wants to. You can tell it hasn't run in a while. Now, let's take a minute to talk about today's sponsor. I'm kidding, we're not that big yet, and I know that wasn't big or clever, but yeah, let's get back to it and start it up. Oh, that's got some turbo flutter, I like that. Yes, okay, right, well, bonus, we know it runs. That is a huge weight lifted. Um, we've definitely got the brake warning light flashing like crazy here. So what, we're on 143,000 miles, smell a lot of that carbon burning off as well. But to uh, just grab a sound clip from round by that engine, Dan, see if we can get the turbo flutter. Oh, 
Okay, right, so I am one happy bunny that that, is, that fires up and runs. Now, like I said, the owner reported it wasn't getting gear, so, ah, uh, yeah, okay. I can feel there's a little crunch when it goes in, so I don't know if, let's just bring that clutch up. Okay, no, it is getting gear. Okay, we've got first. There's nothing for reverse, it's solid. So I don't know whether there's something blocking it there, but it seems to get first and second. Yeah, okay, that's got first and second. Oh, that sound. Fantastic, you can tell. The money then that's been spent on that induction kit has been very well spent because it sounds pucker. So, obviously now I just want to get in and drive it, but this is the problem. It's got no MOT, it's not legal or anything like that, so I can't really go far in it. But um, also I've got no reverse, so I'm going to struggle a lot hell to back out of here, which is a bit of a problem. So, that's the first update on it then. We've got it running, we know it runs. There's no enormous issues to speak of other than that, you know, that we know about the brakes, we know about the gearbox issues. None of those are too enormous. Um, they might seem it, but when we're taking it all apart anyway, we'll find the problems and fix them. But yeah, so I am, I am chuffed to bits. Now a good solid clean over this so we can see what we're working with. And then in the next couple of weeks, this is gonna be pulled in and we'll start to strip it. Now it is gonna be a slow burner. So there is gonna be, they're not gonna be frequent updates because it's gonna to have to be done around the work that we've got, which is plentiful at the moment. We're loaded down with big restorations and all sorts of different jobs. And we've got other project cars like the Nova. As you can see, we're, we're pretty stacked up with work at the moment. Um, and some of it being a bit more long-term, Spudman's high looks in the background there. But the main thing is now I know it runs and I know that to some extent it drives so I can at least give it a bit of a test find out how those brakes feel see exactly what I think the problem is but I do think that that the gear the the, um, the transmission problem and the brake problem may well be linked on the hydraulic circuit somewhere so I think there might be pretty major leak of brake fluid somewhere and that's where it's all losing the pressure from so I'm going to do some more investigation on that as we start to take the engine out that will all become clear I'll try and get it up at some point in the air so I can take a good look underneath at all the, the pipe, the brake pipes running to the wheels, wheel cylinders, calipers, all those kinds of things. But, so for now it's a massive thumbs up. Now, next thing I think we need to do, keep your eye open for the next video because I'm gonna give this a mega thorough clean and get a good ground point, a good baseline for working on it and bring it back up to where it needs to be. So I think we'll get the kit out and we'll give it a good wash. But for now, we'll see you in the next one.